So, remember how I said that falling off a cliff in Skyward Sword doesn't make you lose health? Well then, I really regret nothing! Never mind, I landed on land, now I regret nothing! That was a lot funnier in my head. Kind of interesting that you even flash red even though you don't lose any health. But... I am the leader of Lux and Ape, saying hello to everybody. And this is the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Last time we did a lot of things. We got two out of eight main items, which is great for one episode. We unlocked the first dungeon of the game in Skyview Temple and have determined that Zelda's aura is coming from it. We've went back to Skyloft, we learned about Goddess Cubes, and we got roped into probably the second biggest side quest in the game in the Lumpy Pumpkin thing. Because... Delivering that one thing of soup was by far not the end of it, and I just realized I didn't give a bio for that piece that I killed there. Oh well. Obviously you can't go far that way, or is some peace. Found in many locations, these winged monsters are attracted to sharp places. Dark sharp places! Dark places such as caves. They often gather in colonies, are active at night, and sleep in the day. Those who come too close and awaken them often cough fall You know what I'm saying! I guess we're going back to being inarticulate. I've defeated 17 of them already. I'm very strong with them at fighting them, mostly because they only take one hit now, and that's the second time I've ever gotten hurt by one. And I've beaten 19 now. Don't be surprised if that number reaches the hundreds by the end of the game. Same thing with Bokoblins and all variations of Choo Choo as a whole. Not necessarily just the blue ones. go around this way, and here is the first out of maybe two times in the game where you're actually going to need the slingshot to stun an enemy. But since this is part of solving a puzzle, I'm still counting it as solving a puzzle. Although you're supposed to be able to trick it out and hit the switch there, you're actually supposed to stun the Deku Baba so you can get up here and hit the switch manually. I know that I've hit the switch without having to do that before. I think I've also been able to trick out targeting it from down there and skyward striking it. But that's, that's, I, I, that's how you're supposed to do it. Up here you've got Amber Relic, I think you're supposed to just run at it at the wall. Or I could do this first. This magical sentry has a natural tendency to stare at the tip of sharp pointed objects. You actually have to make the giant eye dizzy by spinning your sword around in a circle, and then it will blow up. Interesting puzzle format is interesting. Come on. What am I... How do you get this? Alright, do I have to... What does this say? Uh, when you hear the wise voice, uh, that's basically let Fi tell you how to beat the thing. Shoot it down with a slingshot? I don't think so. Nope. Slingshot pellets are supposed to go right through things like that. There's another one up on the wall there. Unless that's the same one. Nope, there's three. Or there's two. I can't seem to figure out how to get any of them. Just out of my reach. I've gotten them before, though. It's really weird. Do I have to just run at it from a bigger distance? Or can I get it by... I guess I'll just have to skip those two then. It's weird. Got some slightly harder to reach Deku Babas up there. No big deal at all. Got our first bird statue, and a new enemy should be waiting for us up on this wall. That didn't give me a 
bio. There we go. Target lock, Waltrula. Found mostly in ivy and on walls, you can expect this creature to approach when it senses your presence. This beast lives on other creatures' bodily fluids. A full-grown Waltrula is several orders of magnitude more dangerous than a young one. They are basically clones of the Skull Waltrulas from Ocarina of Time and Jura's Mask. They lurk on climbable walls, and they basically have a fun time sucking your brain dead if you ever get caught by one of them. You break free of them by just shaking the Wiimote nunchuck like the other thing. And another new enemy. Green Bok Hoblin. This variety of Bok Hoblin enjoys dark places such as keys. Its sunlight deficient lifestyle has turned its skin a stomach turning shade of green. However, like its red brethren, it exhibits a fascination with festive undergarments. Green Bok Hoblins. They are the dungeon variation of the red ones. However, however, they do take one more hit. They are virtually identical to red Bokoblin leaders, except they cannot call other Bokoblins to them, so they are technically, they, well, no, they're not technically less dangerous, they are less dangerous, because you have to take into account the hits that the other Bokoblins he spawns can get on you, considering they're triple or more teaming you. Now, once you get in here, remember how a uh, full-grown Waltrula is a lot more dangerous than a young one? I was just uh, Target Lock Skulltula. This giant species of spider inhibits the, inhabits the deepest areas of forest. It attacks with highly adhesive webbing in order to prevent its prey from escaping. It has a tough outer carapace, but its stomach may be vulnerable to attack. I am currently conducting additional analysis into its movement patterns. You wanna know something jerkish? They expect you to die to the Skulltrilla when you first fight it. What Fi said about analyzing movement patterns... Oh, yeah, this is how you kill it. You spin it around and then thrust twice. And then it dies. The Skulltrilla is the only regular enemy with which Fi will do this. The only other enemies she'll do it for are bosses. Fi will have multiple pages or paragraphs or whatever of description about them. But the other paragraphs can only be reached by dying to that enemy. Such as dying in a boss fight will let you get additional information and basically give you a better time fighting that boss. You won't get the recommendation on how to beat a Skulltula unless you die to one, which is actually something that I've done before. The first time I fought a Skulltula, I actually couldn't figure out how to beat it, and I died. So, Fi actually had to tell me something. And there I go saying actually a lot again. But, you know... I hope you don't mind me talking over the puzzles that I've been solving, because they're pretty straightforward, they don't really need to be commentated over, and I think there's other important things that I need to be saying, and I don't feel like interrupting my own train of thought. I'm also trying to be a proper lp -er and talk about either my own life or things outside of the game that I'm currently playing, mostly from other games, but nothing's really coming to mind, so I'm just going to say we're going to open this door. We're going to swing the sword randomly until we kill this guy. There we go. That wasn't too hard. And these Skulltulas, you can't do a thing about. So, what do you have to do?
bypass the bridge by swinging on these vines. Swinging on these vines. Swinging on these vines. There we go. Alright. So, if you press B to stop on a vine, you press up and down, change where you are, increase, decrease your range. Nothing too fancy. You do need to do it there in order to do that. Quadro Babas. Besides doing that, for some reason they take three hits when you use the thrust attack. I guess the thrust since it hits enemies almost all the time, I guess the thrust is weaker. Meaning that Skulltrilla probably would have taken only one hit if I was hitting it with any other attack. Let me see how many tries it takes the Thrust Skyward Strike to beat one. Because I know if I don't cut away any of the rest of the web, it will just stay there taking it. Right, one. Two. I think the Skyward Strike is half as strong as the sword. Yep! Science experiments with the leader of Lux and Ape and Link. Link Link's and not the noob, but noob. Link's a noob. Link is a noob. But he's a noob who somehow knows how to use a slingshot. And that's all that matters. Actually, there was some substance to saying Link's a noob. This is the first Link, so yeah. You want to go up here next and get yourself. You got the dungeon map. Shows the layout of the area and reveals unexplored rooms. Does not flat out say it, but the dungeon maps in Skyward Sword are the dungeon maps combined with the compasses from other Zelda games. Again, it looks like Nintendo's being easy on us by giving us this kind, only one collectible to find every dungeon and making it the same as the two in previous games, because it did that in A Link Between Worlds 2, like giving you an extra bottle. I don't mind the extra bottle so much, especially in Skyward Sword and Link Between Worlds when there's so many different options to choose from to put in a bottle. But if they gave you five bottles in Ocarina of Time, it's kind of much. Still don't get why they gave you six in Majora's Mask, but that just might have been a design choice. And Since Majora's Mask had the same amount of bottleable objects as Ocarina of Time did, since it used the exact same engine, same graphics, it's pretty much an expansion pack of Ocarina of Time with a separate story. Uh, I'm not hating on Majora's Mask. I very much like it. I'm just... being annoyed that I can't climb a log. I'll be back in a minute to talk more about Majora's Mask. Okay, never mind, it only took me one more try. But, yeah, I... I, I guess they... <sighs> I don't get why they would want you to have six bottles worth of stuff, since there's no big section that involves you putting a lot of things in bottles. And after every three-day cycle, everything you have in a bottle goes away. So there's no point in having extra bottles so you can hold on to more useful stuff. So, it's... Something I never really got. Why well, Majora's Mask of all games has six bottles. An Ocarina of Time would be double broken with six bottles, because you could just have six fairies. Like, well, I intended to have one fairy. One fairy is supposed to be all you need. But any Zelda game would be broken if you had six fairies. So it's very hard to do that in Majora's Mask, since fairies are not very plentiful. I it's not... Having six bottles isn't broken in Majora's Mask. I just don't know why they did it. More like it. But in more pressing matters, you have to just simply stand in between these two guys to 
dizzy them to death. Which is a very, very cheery thought. And the holes they leave behind are hexagonal. Really weird. You'd think that since they're technically enemies that a rupee or something would pop out of them since they're hexagonal holes, but... Nope. They're one of the few enemies that lacks the ability to drop anything. Like, maybe because they die in cutscenes or something? I don't know. So, we're just gonna pass the evil log by this time. Two attempts to climb over yet another evil log. That should be a little easier. And, oh, uh, it's painful to look at Link's foot clipping into that lock, but, eh. And this is a cool, cool room. This is the hub of Skyview Temple. It's a big room. It leads in four directions. One of them is just a shortcut back here. One of them requires another key to open the door. It leaves only one way to go. But also, you can head inside here if you kill the keys. That was a good shot, I have to say. Gotta hit that crystal switch with your slingshot. Opens the door. So, get ready for some deja vu from a certain promo video for this Let's Play I made because we're fighting a thing that chopped Link twice in a row in that. Target Lock Stalfos, the mini boss of Skyview Temple. This skeleton soldier is born of the dead. In its previous life, it was an ordinary knight, but undeath has improved its combat abilities. It's possible to overpower it with a well-timed shield bash during the creature's attack. Stalfos is the first example, first real example, of what Skyward Sword intended to be able to do. One-on-one -on -one sword combat with an enemy that's just as powerful as Link. Whoa, that did a lot to my shield. That's not good. This is what I'm saying. The Stalfos is a very powerful adver ad adversary. Okay, I'm going to need to use the Revitalizing Potion. I didn't think I'd need to use that so soon. I was hoping to save it for the boss. Luckily, I only had one or two hits left, but... Didn't really give... I was too busy complaining about my shield to give enough thought to it, but... Skyward Sword was given motion controls so you could get the feeling of having one-on-one -on -one sword combat with an enemy that's just as good with the blade as you are. You kind of get the feeling from fighting a Bokoblin, I guess? But for me, it just feels like broken, like they're all always on the defensive, unless you intentionally let them attack. So that Stalfos is really the first instance. But for now, prepare to let your slingshot become a... I almost said obese. I almost said prepare to let your slingshot become obese. What I meant to say, prepare to let your slingshot become obsolete. You got the beetle, the unexpected, unexp unexplained power contained within this insect shaped item allows you to control it as it flies through the air. The beetle replaced the boomerang, which has appeared in every other Zelda game to allow you to do long-range stuff and things. Select the beetle, and you can aim it around just like you would the slingshot, but you have a ton more control. You have direct control over it. You can pilot it, similar to the plane minigame in Wii Sports Resort that everybody loves for some reason. Don't know why I'm saying for some reason I love it as well. But you can fly it around, you get direct control of it, you are limited in your flight, but that's only understandable. As you can see here, it is running out. I also hit the wall before I had a chance to do anything. But uh, apparently I can't find the switch. 
think I might just need to take a longer loop. You can cut down some of these crates. That'll let you get money that's in them. I don't really find it that important that you do so. You are allowed to check your map, which is really nice. It doesn't show you where your beetle is. It just shows you where Link is facing. So yeah, there we go. I went the wrong way. I need to go left instead of right. Do I? All right, I must just be missing a switch because the door, the door closed when you went through the first time. And you have to hit the same crystal switch from before to... Oh, there we go. It was right next to it the whole time. <sighs> Am I really going to have to cut for this? Right after I started saying that I'm usually very good at this game. At least I actually hit it that time. Uh. You may have noticed, though, another closed grate. That is something very, very important. What you're going to want to do is keep spiraling or keep just heading upwards. And That's the wrong direction. So we're going for that piece of heart. Which, as I said before, it really helps to have seven heart containers for the first boss. This is how you get one. You There are only four heart pieces that you can obtain before getting to the boss of Skyview Temple. The one that's out in the open in Faron Woods. The one from the Goddess Cube chest. The one from the Lumpy Pumpkin. And this one. If you get all of them, you will have seven heart containers going into the first boss fight. This is a big help. If you're not, if you had trouble with stall fighting the Stalfos, you are going to really, really want to pick up that heart container. Just saying. Not really trying to spoil the boss. You'll see in the next episode. But, the uh, yeah. I didn't get to show it there, but the beetle has the ability to collect rupees, treasures, or hearts that it touches. Also, if I tap the stem of that Deku Baba, it would have been instantly killed because a hit to the stem will kill a Deku Baba. But if I hit the face, the beetle would bounce off. The beetle can distract certain enemies from Link. And, but it cannot even stun them when it hits. You won't even be able to take out a keys with it. The beetle is not an attack item. The only thing the slingshot has over it is its ability to be used to stun enemies. But the beetle has allowed for a lot more innovative, innovative puzzling. And as I show instead of tell how to beat a sculpture like this, Well, actually, as I also show, instead of tell how to solve this puzzle with the three eyes instead of just two or one, allow me to explain why the boomerang was replaced with the beetle, because it was a long-ranged item almost useless as a weapon, but incredibly instrumental in solving puzzles. It's been stated that the boomerang was originally intended for Skyward Sword never appeared as a beta element. There were no screenshots or trailers showing a boomerang in use, but presumably it was to be motion controlled like every other item in the game. However, according to certain developers, I'm not going to bother looking up because I know I know the developers said this, 
it's not worth saying exactly finding out exactly who they learn, realized that the boomerang was moving too fast to easily be motion controlled when they tried slowing it down it became improbable that something moving at that speed could fly if it was a boomerang so they replaced it with some kind of mechanical thing that flies because of technology, not because of physics. Well, I mean, technology is physics, physics is math, everything is numbers, but that, you know what I mean. And you also know what I key mean, but what key means. Key means that I'm going to actually end this episode before half an hour has passed for once. Which means that I need to hit that crystal switch and get to a bird statue so that I can save after I'm done with this recording. That's not what I meant to do, obviously. This crystal... S I'm sorry that I'm not showing this. I'm also sorry that at the beginning of the episode I didn't show that when you descend back to the surface you can choose any bird statue you've talked to before to descend to as a point instead of automatically going to the top of the sealed grounds. Unfortunately I'd only talked to three bird statues. It's a good thing that I used the one in front of Skyview Temple to go to the sky because then it would have been really annoying getting back. There's a Phi tutorial that I also think it was good thing that I skipped. But, other than that, yeah. That crystal switch does not open the door. Spoke wrong. It raises the water level, which allows you to get to the door. And, next time, we're going to get to the door with the key in it. Unlock that door, and head forwards to the Skyview Temple in search of the missing Zelda. Which I've said for the past three episodes, but this time, we're actually going to get to the spot on the map that says that Zelda Zora is coming from it. Till then, I'm Leader of Luxenape, signing off.